right, boys, and we are back, man. We are back at TX2K so that we could finish up roll racing. They finished up qualifications this morning. Eliminations are starting soon. So I want to check and see if our boys made the ticket, man. Did they made it. Let's check on them now. Come on. All right, guys, so we're here with my brother from another, but you guys don't know him, so we'll start like we don't know each other, all right? <laughs> Tell everybody your name. What's up, man? I'm Patrick Skuse, and I got a RS3, and that's how we met. You still have the RS3? I still get the RS3. Oh, I thought you got rid of it. Okay. No, no, it's 1,300. So, I just keep it at home. This is my slow car. So y'all heard that, 1,300 horsepower RS3. That's how I met this guy. Full transparency. We were at the event together. Yeah. I saw your car run. I was like, what is that? I never knew. Your car was the first one that I've seen of that platform. What do they call that motor or the platform? Uh, the 07K, it's a five cylinder. And it's also known as the what? The Daza. Right, so yep. that's what everybody calls it yep. now, right? I never knew those cars were fast. No. No, until I saw your car. That was what, three years ago? Yeah, three years ago. That was like three years ago. Yep. And that was the first time I'd have, you ran a what at Pocono? Uh, it was like a 170. That's really, you guys got to understand how fast that is um, because it's in the mountains. The conditions are horrible. It's at elevation. So most cars to run above 160, you got to have a thousand. Yeah, oh, easy. You got to make a thousand to run above 160. DA will start off at like 1800 and it'll go right. all the way up to like 56, 5700. Exactly. Throughout the day. Throughout the day. It's yeah. crazy. It, it's bad up there. Yeah. But uh, tell us, man, what is this you're standing uh, behind right now? So I felt like, I was like, you know what, I like the five cylinder, let's just do, let's add another five cylinders to it. Maybe another turbo. <laughs> so I went out, got an R8, sent it to Hank Iroz, and uh, it's a stock motor. It's got uh, some Zona rotors on it, fully built trans, like an AMS, fully crazy level five, 10 million, I don't even know. Um, it put down 1780 stock motor. Um, and, uh, Bruh. What? Yeah. Stock motor? Stock motor. Is this the highest stock motor power car? Oh, uh, that probably is. Which one is? Probably that. Whose is this one? That's Hank. And who's yeah. Hank? And then this is my little brother, Tim. He has a full build. Uh, it's 2,000 wheel. Oh, so that's why y'all all together? Yeah. Okay, y'all about to go to tear shit up. Yeah. All Here right, man, so stock motor, but fully built everything else. Yeah, fully build everything else. Our pistons, rod, all what that. Computer? What's that? What computer? Motec. It's on a Motec. Motec. I see the, the billet uh, intake manifold. You yep. gotta go up. Yep. Uh, what do you hope to run right now? Uh, maybe 185. And then you'll turn it up. All right, brothers. Yep. We'll catch it.
All right, so we're back over here with Pat with the RA. Um, you guys saw the pass. Tell us what happened. Well, it's going good. I was doing 100, 150 at like 3 3 flat. Um, and then hit 156. Saw maybe a little bit of a lean, and it went to limbo. And that's the Motec doing that, right? Yep. That sends yep. it into a protection. Since it's a stock motor, we have it pretty sensitive. So it just, just in case, we don't have the motors to blow. So it just kind of went to limbo. I hit a wall, and I was like, oh my God. I yeah, was going, you did the man. Same was you did the same 156. It took off. Yeah. It was out of there at first. Yeah, it, it just was, stopped. Yeah, it just hit a wall, and I was like, oh, I'm so definitely what's the on the fix? way to 189. My brother did 189. So yeah, I got, his, I got him running 189 yeah. on the video, yeah. It was quick. Yeah. That's the fastest 100, 150 I've ever done. So what's the fix? We added some MS-109. Okay. And then we changed the levels in the computer. Just All right, well, the can't wait to the next run, brother. Yeah, man. All right, it's good luck. good. Thanks. Yo, man, TX2K is a wrap. This is a wrap for TX2K, at least for me. Got up early this morning. It's Sunday. It's officially the last day of drag racing, but I was like, yo, I'm out. I got to keep it a buck with y'all, man. I, I usually don't, you know, if I don't like something, I usually don't say it. Or if something don't go my way, I usually don't say it. I just suck it up and I move on. That being said, man, I came out to TX2K this year with some really, really high hopes. Really high hopes. And the hopes that I had was that I would get the experience that I had like I did the first time I came in 2011 and like I did when I came back in 2019. And those hopes were based on the fact of you had these amazing builds that were built by amazing people. Guys, you can tell that's been working on their cars for years and years and years and getting into the best that they could possibly be for their platform. My experience coming into TX2K, we went to the track, as you guys saw, I think our first day of the track was Thursday. So it would have been roll racing. Now, um, I've been around for a long time, man, with this racing stuff. So I knew a very large part of the field of people that were racing. But the majority of people that I knew were people who have put years into their builds. And, you know, you guys are going to see videos that's coming that's going to feature these people. So I don't want to, you know, throw some salt on that. However, what I also saw when I got there is I've never seen so many Lamborghinis and so many R8s and so many super huge uh, GTR builds in one place. So what are these cars? These cars are all all-wheel drive, all DCT. And in addition to that, with the majority of them having a starting price somewhere of $200,000 um, and going up to $600,000, $700,000, depending on which Lamborghini you're talking about. In addition to that, these cars are all you know, making stupendous amount of power. So that means stupendous amount of money. What I found to be a common theme this year, um, and it's, I guess it's been getting there a little bit by little bit every year, right? Cars have been getting faster and faster every year. Kudos, it pushes the industry forward. Cool, but what you can tell is, in my opinion, TSUK has officially become the playground for the rich. If I could equate it to anything, it would be horse racing. You have these amazing horses that were breeded over years to make them perfect, to make them the, the, the best specimen possible. But the people who do it for the love of horsing, horses, they necessarily can't really compete anymore at some of the larger tournaments and events because you have the richest of the rich that have breeded the perfect everything, right? The same thing is happening with these cars. Uh, these cars now are the richest of the rich who are pouring gobs of money. When you see um, a Lamborghini have 2,000 horsepower, you are looking at a car that was $300,000 to start minimum and then has another 500000 into it. No exaggeration whatsoever. Like crazy when you think about it in that way. And to think about the fact that uh, the majority of the field are these cars. So then the question becomes, who owns these cars? Because you see these cars, but then you see them driven by the same people. You know, maybe one person is driving three, four, five cars. So whose cars are these? A lot of times it's just, just like horse racing. It's just some rich guy somewhere watching from a TV or, you know, watching a live stream just like you. 
time. He just wants to see his car go fast. And whatever. I mean, that's cool. I respect it. Um, but I can tell you that when I sat there on Thursday during qualifying and I saw how many cars were going 190 miles an hour, like it was nothing. Is it exciting? Sure. To see what, what is possible and what is capable. So, great. But then what I noticed is, I'm like, okay. So when you see a Camaro pull up and you know that this car is really modified, you know, making, you know, 900,000 more horsepower and it's doing 150s, that gives you a sense of, holy, wow, that's different, you know? And then you see cars that are really fast going 160s. And, you know, five years ago, 160s was, that was a nice thick of the field for uh, what I guess at the time would have been a sport car class. Today, the slowest car out of 56 cars did 184 mile an hour. Why does that bother me, right? You're probably asking yourself, why does that bother you, Steph? Well, um, it, it doesn't necessarily bother me as much as I just feel for the people who traveled across the country who have amazing builds that will never be seen because they don't have the money that these other guys do. So therefore, I just feel like a lot of these events are becoming that. It's like wallet events as opposed to enthusiast car guy events. So as I leave TX2K and I look at, you know, the disaster of all the crashes, which is disastrous for people, man. That's, that's scary as hell. And I look at all of the breakdowns because the reality is, yes, these cars are getting faster, but they're being pushed past their limits now. And, you know, that's why the GTR class, the first day, took hours and hours to get through because one GTR will make a pass, the next one will break. One will make a pass, the next one will break. But if you're talking about 2,000, 2,500 horsepower, out of that little six cylinder, I mean, what you expect, right? In anything, I don't like one type. I like diversity in anything that I do. And when, when that's the result, there's no more diversity. The diversity is gone, you know what I mean? And I just feel like that was an amazing, in 2011, it felt like a grassroots event. You had crews of people, you know, everybody racing their cars. And it's just the feeling, it was a feeling that changed my life. So. The reason why I feel salty about it is because I just feel like for the everyday man, and when I say everyday man, don't get it twisted. Because, you know, if, you know, shout out to somebody like my guy Ty, shout out to Sean, you know, or, you know, shout out to even, you know, Pat and stuff. These are all names that you're gonna see in features and videos that's gonna come. But these guys have $100,000 into their cars. So it's not like they broke dudes, you know what I mean? But you just can't compete when you're going up against a company. A person cannot compete against a company. It just, with an endless wallet. So what do we want to see? Do we want to see wallet racing? Or do we want to see people racing? Me personally, I want to see people racing. But maybe that's just what we have to book. Let's, let's, let's keep things in perspective. And let's be real about what this event is. It's a wallet race. <laughs> Hands down. Speaking specifically about the roll racing, it is a wallet race. Hands down. Still an amazing event. If that's what you went to, that's what you're going for. Dope. But be honest about that. Um, that being said, man, that's why it's going to be so important going forward for me when it comes to events. I've done events before with airstrips and stuff like that. And the vibe is just completely great. The range of people who come in McLarens and they come in Lambos and then there's dudes who come in, you know, Audis, BMWs, and Toyotas. It might be a Toyota Super, but you get the point. Point is, way more diverse, way more grassroots. Partnering with people like Race Motive, they have that vibe too. There are big dogs, don't get it wrong. There's a lot of big dogs and stuff like that, but they still are accepting of the dude who is working his job, working on his car on weekends, working on it for years, and finally getting into something that he can compete on a stage. Like, 
Pocono or like MIR that's coming up or like our event with them at New Jersey Motorsports Park. I just had to keep it a buck with y'all that I'm leaving this event sore, pulse, but you get the point. I'm just, things didn't kick off right from the beginning, even from day one, you know, not to comment on things that uh, have nothing to do with me, but basically there were, you know, people who attacked other people. Somehow some of the person that looked like me got kicked out and the people who attacked him did that set me off on the wrong foot to start from day one i was like oh they on that shit, bro. um it's one thing to know underlying the fact that yes you you know in, in a lot of spaces are tolerated and not appreciated we know that we deal with that every day you know what i'm saying in our everyday life, we deal with the fact that a lot in a lot of spaces we are tolerated, but not necessarily appreciated. But when you see someone piled on top of another person, and you pull a person off the top and throw out the guy from the bottom, everybody should get thrown out. If they fighting, everybody gets thrown out. So it, it was what it was. It just, that was that was a bad taste to start the weekend. And then just seeing the wallet racing, I was like, oh, nah. So, you know, the, the last couple days, I didn't even go. I felt like the vibe was just off. And I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people that feel the same way. As you guys, like I said, these features that I'm going to be doing on some of the cars, I featured some super fast cars. They didn't even make the cut. And these are super fast, amazing builds. And you guys are going to see their level of disappointment and frustration. Uh, but... It's okay because not every event is for you. So, for me, TX2K ain't it. It just ain't it for me. It was amazing to me when it catered to, I feel like, everyone. But it just ain't it for me. And, you know, I don't really got nothing else to say. I'm about to hop this flight home. And I'll talk to y'all a little bit more once we go through the flight. Maybe we hop in an Uber. I'll catch y'all at the crib. All right, come on.